I've been playing with some graphics today and I've been wondering how many sound engineers are aware of the fact that the same algorithms we use in audio are used in graphics. In the end, they are just the numbers. So, I will be using Quavla Pro 11. This is just a great software. And I will just try to create some simple tone files with different sample rates. So, sinus 1k. Okay, so I'm playing the 44.1k. And we can see on the analyzer 1k tone. And let's do it for a higher sample rate. And we can't play it because my audio device is obviously limited to, I think it's to 192k. So I will use Resample plugin. We'll be working in internal sample rate of the source file, but the output of the Resample plugin will change everything to 48k which will allow me to hear the files and also to analyze them with the same resolution with uh, any type of analysis in WaveLab. Now I will write a very simple plugin that will just produce a, a single tone with a given frequency. So it's basically like this. Okay, let's compile it. Bang. Okay, so let's find our plugin. It's called More 67 Square. Okay, uh, it will produce a single tone. We are in 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. And now we are getting over uh, over the border. Right, we can see we have a harmonic that's kind of bounced off the Nyquist frequency. So the higher we uh, we go, the lower we get. Right. So for 30k, uh, we can store this. It's the, the orange one. Let's go to the higher sample rate. And do the same thing. And we can see that that nothing is happening actually. And this is actually normal because 30 the high sample rate like 384 kilohertz, we have a lot of spectrum to fill. So 30k tone is actually working in this realm, but we can't see it because it's over our analyzer, but it's not rejected. While when we are in a 44.1 realm, it's basically this frequency does not exist in this realm. So this is just an error uh, produced by, by our plugin. Yeah, it's, uh, it shouldn't be there, right? So let's try the same thing with 48k uh, sample rate and we will see what will happen. Okay, and it's also bounced, but we can see that the highest uh, frequency from the tone generator that we did uh, is uh, way above this orange one. The spectrum is wider in 48k, which is normal, and it's just bounced later. This tone is bounced later from the Nyquist frequency. Okay, so now I want to produce a square wave 
which is basically a tone with infinite numbers of odd harmonics. But of course, infinity does not exist in digital realm. So let's Google that. Yes, square wave. Okay, and here we can read about uh, math basics. Okay, so I, I just created a plugin that is doing the, the thing, so it will produce a number of given har odd harmonics to the tone. Right? Building that. Okay. Okay, so let's find our plugin. And it produces uh, a single tone right now. And we can see in both analyzers how it looks. Now, two beautiful tones, and it looks like that. And the more harmonics we are adding, the wave looks more like a square wave, actually. But what will happen if I will add more harmonics that than they exist in this realm of 44.1 and we can see that that those harmonics see are being bounced off the Nyquist frequency uh, and they create just a mess so so we can't have a true infinite uh, number of harmonics in this realm which is obvious and why I've been showing that is uh, basically every saturation plugin or compression plugin, they, they actually change a single tone and they, they kind of shape, shape it more into a square wave and with distortion it's obviously a square wave. I will pick uh, just a typical saturation plugin from a really cool company and um, most of the plugins work in a very similar way. So what you're gonna guys see, it's not a failure of this uh, specific plugin. Uh, so let's try a single tone shaping in a high frequency realm first. Okay, so we have a single tone. Let's snapshot it. So we have a reference, right? And let's turn on the plugin. Okay, we have interesting wave and a lot of harmonics. And we can see that all the harmonics are just uh, straight looking and beautiful bars. So it's very clean, right? And so let's try the same thing with the low sample rate. Okay, the same tone. Bang. It's messy, right? There's a lot of things happening that are nasty. And it's the same thing that was happening with producing a square wave. So this situation in science we call aliasing, which also exists in graphics. So basically any digital realm will have problems with aliasing that we have to deal with and I will explain that and show you guys also how it works with uh, with the 2D graphics because it's almost the same okay let's draw some circles so, uh, I'm going to draw a circle uh, in high resolution, which is 1000 pixels. Okay, and it's a circle. Beautiful, nice, round circle. It's round, you can see that, right? Let's do the same thing in low resolution. So it's 100 pixels.
and let's draw it. Yeah, and we can see that there's some blurriness on the edges. The circle looks nice. Not so good as the high resolution, but still look nice. And now let's draw the same uh, low resolution circle, but without anti-aliasing filter. Okay, and we can see that it looks not so nice, right? Yeah. So the blurriness is actually made by anti-aliasing filtering uh, inside GIMP. And let's change the resolution of this high resolution. Let's down sample this circle. Let's stretch it. Yeah. And we can see that down sampled high resolution circle looks just like the low resolution with anti aliasing filtering, right? Okay, so now let's play with the contrast, which is basically the process of changing the dynamics uh, in the graphics, which is very similar of changing the dynamics uh, in audio. Uh, so for example, applying saturation plugin or compression plugin. So uh, it's really interesting and we will get pretty similar um, effects, I would say. So let's try with the high resolution circle. I will apply. And nothing really changes, which is normal for black and white circle, right? And I will downsize it. And zoom it. Yeah. And it looks actually like the circle that was drawn in uh, and low resolution, which is normal, right? And now let's apply the same processing to the low resolution. So just let's change the dynamics of low resolution circle. And we can see this nastiness that's happening on the edges, right? So if we apply this kind of process in low resolution graphics, we'll get a lot of aliasing, right? So it's much better to play with the contrast with high resolution graphics. Okay, let's sum it up. This is how I feel, so this is just my opinion about the topic. But I think that CT quality, which is 44K, is just enough for human beings to enjoy music. And we don't need more, because most of us can't hear anything above 20K. At the same time, I think processing and mixing should be done in higher sample rates, because it really makes a difference. And I understand that storing high sample rate audio files on hard drive is maybe unnecessary. So most of the plugin developers will deliver a solution called app sampling in the plugin. So most of the plugins will use app sampling to get better quality of processing. And I can show you ladies what's the problem. So let's uh, add delay compensation to see current delay. And let's add one of the plugins I've been working on, which is E27. And I had to deliver really good quality app sampling algorithms to get the best quality for analog emulation. But the problem is that the plugin will do app sampling on the input of the plugin, and then it will do down sampling on the output of the plugin. So if we stack two together, right, the latency will be bigger. And those plugins will unnecessarily do some kind of work, which is it could be doing up sampling here and down sampling after, but it's doing it twice. So if we have a lot of plugins in a row, it will stack latency and and there will be a lot of unnecessary processing happening. So what I feel 
and what could be done in the host applications it could there could be a button where i could enable app sampling algorithms done by daw for the track so if a track doesn't use any plugins and i don't need that i wouldn't need to apply that for the track but if I will have a track like this and maybe I will have like free cues, maybe some saturation and some extra hard stuff going on, I could enable that just to do up sampling so the whole track would be processed in higher sample rate to get the best quality audio. And at the same time, I would lower the latency and maybe I could just change it on the fly. So for example, I could hear the difference of the whole mix. And that would be really cool.